Perhaps you've just started cycling and you've got some neck and back pain, or you've bought a brand new bike and you're feeling a little worse for wear. Whatever your reason, if you've got neck and back pain, this is the video for you. So here are our top six ways to eliminate those aches and pains. We're all built differently, and this does mean that a standard sized bike probably won't fit our individual differences, so you will require a few tweaks before you hit the road. This can be tweaked with a different length stem or a brand new set of handlebars, but the best bang for your buck will probably come from getting a professional bike fit. This could be when you buy a new bike or after a few years as your fitness and flexibility adapts. Your technique is one of the key signs of injury, and even though you may be focused on speed ahead of comfort, Ensuring that you're comfortable on the bike is key to the longevity of your riding. However, bike fits can prove costly and a quick fix with a precise change can be the best way forward. One of these could be your saddles being too high and causing you to reach the pedals and causing your pelvis to rock whilst pedaling. Remember that the saddle height can be affected from a number of different things, such as the new saddle itself, the thickness of your bib shorts or the stack of the pedals. If you're feeling sore after a ride, it's good to reflect on what may be causing these issues. Another key factor may be the reach in your handlebars. Having them too far away or too close can cause injuries in your shoulders, and therefore adjusting accordingly with the stem length or rising them up or moving them closer can solve these issues. Ensuring yourself and your bike are correctly kitted out for the type of riding you're doing is another top tip to take on board. Gloves, warm weather items such as base layers are key to keep your back and neck warm and making sure, especially during the winter months, that your muscles don't contract due to the cold. The bike itself can also provide a little bit of extra support to your neck and back. This can be done by adding an extra layer of bar tape or running slightly wider tires for that extra shock absorption which would otherwise go through your body when riding on rough roads. Looking after your body before and after a ride is almost as key as the ride itself. Activating key neck and back muscles before a ride and stretching after a ride is crucial to staying injury free. Even though your lower back or your neck could be causing you issues, this doesn't mean this is where the weakness lies in your body. Your hips, your hamstrings, or somewhere else could be tight or weak itself and require regular strengthening and stretching. It's not just a one and done job either. Keep stretching when watching TV or first thing in the morning, as this will not only benefit your body, but also be really beneficial for your mental health as well. We aren't suggesting you should swap out your regular riding time for curling weights to the gym, but implementing a few key core exercises can be crucial to increasing your stability and taking the load off your lower back. While squat and leg workouts can build your pedaling power, strengthening your core muscle can really help your pedaling technique. And it also takes the load of smaller muscles, which may be taking the strain otherwise. The way you ride on the bike can also have a knock-on effect to your body, even though you may be riding the same amount of miles as someone else. Riding at low cadence but maintaining a high power output typically requires the body to put a lot of strain on its muscles and joints, whereas shifting this onto your cardiovascular system and raising the cadence is a much more effective way of pedaling. Aiming to ride at a cadence of 85 to 90 RPM is a nice balancing point, but this doesn't mean you have to eliminate all low cadence riding. Just avoid prolonged stints grinding the gears and putting unnecessary strain on your joints and muscles. Lastly, this is a tried and tested rule that's used across endurance sports. The 10% rule suggests you shouldn't increase your weekly mileage or your long training ride by more than 10% each week. This means if you ride 200 miles one week, you shouldn't look to ride more than 220 miles the next. Slowly progressing your mileage will mean your body won't fatigue as dramatically and mean that your body won't be compensating for any aches and pains. Hopefully those tips will ensure you don't pick up any unwanted neck or back injuries, but do let us know your top tips in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly channel. And until next time, we'll see you then.